Phoenix and Six. Half the bucks in the series. You're delusional. Your basketball card should be without. I need to see more. Yo. You are Yo. Sums, and that's Aiden Munson, and welcome back to the show today, guys. We have another NFL episode today, and we have our editor and our producer T here on the show today. And today's topic is what's next for the Seattle Seahawks. As you know, the Seattle Seahawks currently sit at five and ten, which is fourth in the NFC West, and they have just been eliminated from playoff contention. This is the second time this has happened in Russell Wilson's tenure with the Seattle Seahawks franchise. So if you don't know, TD is a lifelong. He he is the biggest Seahawks fan I know. So T D as a Seahawks fan, you know, over these past couple of years, Seahawks been pretty much dominant when it comes to playoff contention and dominating the NFC West for years. So uh-huh. now so now, T D, knowing that the Seahawks are five and ten, how how do you feel as a Seahawks fan? Uh you know, of course it feels horrible. Not knowing if I'm gonna have if I'm gonna have my the franchise QB is gonna be there, not knowing what changes is gonna be made. But yeah, we'll just we'll have to see what happens. Aiden, um you're you're a Rams fan and right now he, you're sitting in a pretty good position as a prominent contender in the mm-hmm. NFC and in dominating the NFC West is either you or the Cardinals gonna go away with the number one seed in the NFC West. But <laughs> But but the Rams have already clinched the playoff spot. So Aiden, uh, putting all your bias aside, putting all your hatred mm. of the Seahawks aside, what should the Seahawks do going forward when they approach Russell's future? Blow it up, trade him, trade him all. That was a horrible trade. Trade Russell. Only got a couple more years left anyway. Trade Bobby. Even less amount of years left. Blow up the machine. Your That's defense true. is atrocious. O line is still dog. You have DK Metcalf, who at this point is a more of a bodybuilder than a NFL wide receiver. You have Russ, who's had his struggles and his injuries. It's 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 horrible to watch. You guys don't draft well in the first round. You guys trade away all your assets and picks to get players that make little to no difference. Um, years ago, we were calling Jamal Adams one of the most transcendent safety talents ever to become of this league. And now we are sitting here wondering what went wrong. If I'm being completely honest, it is time to blow up the machine. All right, uh, Aiden, I feel like there's like today. I feel like the re- there there are three things that need to be discussed: the now, coaching, of course, with Pete Carroll, and then the future re- possible rebuild of the franchise. Right now, the Seahawks have the 30th ranked offense in the league, the 31st ranked defense. But you, I just wrote down some of the Seahawks' current problems, and you know, offensively, they really don't have a run game. And I know Chris Carson uh, missed the majority of the season due to injury. And the Seahawks right now, they don't have they don't even have a 500 yard rusher this year. The defense is the last in time of possession in the league, and the second to last in pass defense. And even though they don't give up a whole lot of points, um, they can't they get off the field. They can't. And but offensively, Tyron Lockett, you know, really the bright spot, some bright side. So if Tyron Lockett is having a career year, you know, he has another thousand yard season. Uh, had a career year this year, but. Addressing Russ, I don't think Russ is the problem. Like, if we ask the question, is Russell Wilson the problem? Right, he's never been the problem. Like, like I know Russ didn't come back 100% from the finger injury, of course. Because when he came back after Geno went, like, one for three as a starter uh, in those four games, the Seahawks were still in position to possibly get back into the mix of being a top contender, a top contender in the NFC and possibly get into that wild card spot or in the hunt spot when it comes to the playoff mix. But I feel like when it comes to coaching, I feel like Pete Carroll has to go. I feel like his football philosophy hasn't evolved with the times. Like every game, like when I when Seahawks games do come on and I have the ability to do so, like he has an outdated football philosophy. Like and it has caused the Seahawks score years. So when you examine the situation, Pete Carroll had like a six year window with the Legion of Boom and then later in that era. <laughs> That one in that six-year window. 
Right, he got one, but he could have got two, three, or possibly four Super Bowl rings. Possibly. That that's just my thinking. And he hasn't evolved with the times. He just wants to run the ball, and he doesn't use his best using his best assets. Um, but you know, when we talk about the future, I think Russ or Bobby are not. They can't carry the team forever. Uh, and I feel like this was three to four years in the making. I feel like this is the beginning of the end of this Seahawks playoff contention era and the Seahawks are cheap because you see multiple times you've had hits and misses the one hit you had when it came to free agent wide receivers was Josh Gordon and the misses yeah. were Odell Beckham Jr. and Antonio Brown yep. right those were the misses the Seahawks I feel like this direction is a rebuild but it wouldn't take as long of a rebuild we saw like with the Browns I feel like it would be a short rebuild but they on picks though let's look at look at all their past picks and give me one hit other than dk metcalf and quandre Diggs. russell wilson but that no, was, he, was, he was a third rounder right you you can't but you miss out on some of the best talent in the league by not being able to participate in the first round but we also get some of the best talent in, the league in later rounds it's like you're wasting picks you the game history of it. i mean <laughs> I mean, let's look at let's look at who you missed out on. Y'all took a y'all took I believe a couple years ago y'all took a linebacker from Texas Tech who I had never heard of up until that point. Even in the DK Metcalf draft, you missed out on talent. Well, we got one of the best times in the draft, also in the second round. It does not name a, no 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 name a lot of name name as many players you can better than DK Metcalf in that draft name, as I can. Okay, here it goes. Justin Jefferson. Brother, whoa, oh, whoa, 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 now. I'm not upset with y'all because I know you're mentally ill, which is why one day I'm going to open up a hospital for mentally ill Africans. I'm going to hospitalize you coons. A.J. Brown. He's not better than D.K. Metcalf. A.J. Brown. A.J. Brown was the better of the teammates, in fact, when they were at Ole Miss. And he in, has in, in. Cards. In college, he was. He's still a better receiver. Is he better than? Um, what do you want me? To, okay. What do you want me? To, Cooper Cup is him. Ah oh, shit! Here we go again. I care about the coons, brothers and sisters. We're going to open up a mental health rehabilitation hospital for political coonery. We are going to treat the coons, brothers and sisters. We can't leave them out there. We have to treat the coons. And the GM or whoever's in charge of that trades away the assets. And now you're stuck in this situation where you have an absence of true of some true young talent aside from a couple of players. Well, you got to think team. about at, you got to think about at the time when we traded about this, uh, when we traded for Jamal, we were a contending team. We needed a little help on defense, and, and Jamal was like one of the best safeties in the league. I don't know why he. I don't I'm know not, what happened when I'm he got not, to Seattle, but but I'm, I'm saying it was in the, in the moment when you're a contending team and you just need a little piece to put you over. It kind of makes sense, maybe not for those amount of I mean, assets. The problem, though, you Jamal know. has injuries. The first time, first uh, within weeks of him touching down in Seattle, he had to get hand surgery. All right, but like, you can't predict that. He was still one of the best. To, I mean, league. y'all need to look at his history, though. Okay. Let us save the coons. We have to do this. We have to do this. All right, to uh, back up TD's point. Well, I'm going to go with TD's side on this. So, like, at the time, right, Jamal Adams played for, like, literally the worst football, worst franchise in football. And he was, at the time, like, arguably the best safety in football. And they made that move a very risky and a very bold move, something we haven't seen from the Seahawks in a very, very long time at the time. And you bring him in, and at that time, we all thought, including me, I even thought that that was the missing piece of the puzzle. That was the missing piece of the puzzle. Because at the time, three teams in the NFC that were just going to compete for a Super Bowl every year, Green Bay, Rams at the time, who I believe were just coming off of a Super Bowl appearance, and then Seattle. We just, yeah, 2019, yeah. Those were the three teams. And then Jamal comes in, you know, has his hand surgery. But I don't think, I feel like we're putting too much on Jamal for the situation at the time. But right now, knowing the situation and the predicament the Seahawks are in right now when it comes to Russ, Russ seems displeased. And I'm not going to question his effort 
because I feel I'm not gonna question his effort because he just came off of a fucking finger injury in the middle of the season and is and attempted to get his team back into the playoff mix. But knowing the situation and analyzing the situation for what it is, I feel like right now is pretty much the end of the Seahawks for right now. All right, uh, quick take, guys. Just need one team, teams that you can see Russell Wilson with outside of the Seattle Seahawks. TD. Uh, there's no one. I don't think we should make a trade this year. But, like, I think this year we should try to find a new head coach who's willing to update the system, <laughs> you know. I think this year the main move we should do is, is, is fire Pico. All right. All right. All right. So, um, I would the, – only the best option is Chicago. Um, the contract, like I said, is immovable. You would have to – at the you would have to take on $35 million at, on the jump and then have to ha- pay 107 mil guaranteed and then at signing he had a guaranteed 70 million then he's got 65 million of signing bonuses and this is four years he's not a free agent until 2024 it's impossible to do then the cap hit the cap hit is 37 million and it keeps going up it's 32 million this year 37 million next year 40 million the year after that and then there's dead cap. There's dead cap if you trade them. That's fifty-eight million in dead cap. The first year, twenty twenty-one, then you trade them. Next year is twenty-six million. The year after that is thirteen million. Yearly cash, you take another nineteen million this year, twenty-four million next year, twenty-seven million the next year. It's not gonna happen this year, like T D said. But the best you can do is maybe try and move Bobby and maybe um find a new head coach. All right. Um, I'm gonna end on this note. The team I could possibly see Russell Wilson with outside the Seattle Seahawks is the Denver Broncos, and I say that because, of course, you have Teddy Bridgewater. Of course, you have Drew Lock. If you put Russell Wilson on the Denver Broncos, they are immediate contenders in the AFC. That's true. No. All right. I feel like you put Russ on the Broncos, they are an immediate contender in the AFC. You look at all their pieces. Uh, in the backfield, you have Melvin Gordon. And then at the wide receiver position, you have Corona Sutton. Defensively, you have guys like Bradley Chubb. You have Justin, guys like Justin Simmons. And Judy. Right, you have a defensive oriented coach in Biggie. Now, Bucky Simmons, that's a that's a good get right there. That's a great get right there. Uh oh man. Um with that being on, on that note, guys, I think it's time to end the episode. But guys, if you enjoyed this episode, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, comment down below, and also make sure to hit that button for post some games for every video and update from my channel. Until then, guys, this is Miss Sports Sunders Aiden. I'm Darius that's Aiden. That thanks to our editor T D. And this is Miss Sports Sunders Aiden. So guys, until then guys, see you on the next episode. Until then guys, peace.